sort of a quick update on where we are. I mean, the day phase was launched just over three years ago. Uh, so it's a review of where we are, and then actually Martin and Sebastian are going to give some more details on some of the projects we're actively doing at the moment. So I hope all of you have seen this particular slide before, because this is the front page for Contemol, and if you haven't, you've got a little card here telling you how to register. Uh, and you can use it all for free. There are some of the bells and whistles that are for paying members only, but you just want to go in there and download a few cross sections. It's just available for anyone, anyone to do. So this is, the, as I say, the, the front page. And I think there are a couple of you whose pictures are not on here, but this is what Anna assumed was the board when she put it together. Uh, but anyway, we have a, a, a a scientific board who have never actually met before. So we thought it was actually a good moment to try and get everyone together. There's been a lot going on, help us decide what we will do in the future and get, get, some, get some input into whether we're going in the right direction or what things people really need uh, in terms of pushing the database forward. So, so what were the sort of big picture, what was the aim of quantum old Database QDB was basically to provide comprehensive chemistries as input for plasma models. So there are a number of databases around, but the majority of them tend to do things like have electron collisions or heavy particle collisions or occasionally even surface data. But there uh, is rather a, a lack of somewhere where you can basically go as a one-stop shop for everything. So that was that was the that was a sort of big picture idea, and it was slightly in response to the fact that we were getting a lot of requests to hand assemble these sort of chemistries from various various users and we would do it, but then you sort of give the data, give the data to the person who's asked you to do it, and that's chose the project and then keep the legacy. It seemed more sensible to actually construct everything into a big database and then assemble the chemistries from that database. So that's that was sort of the overall philosophy. Uh, Anna told me to write something about the data model. I've written something extremely <laughs> broad brush about the data model. Uh, we can discuss that later if we need to, but basically we divide into species and reactions. Uh, and reactions have, are either cross sections or rates. So, largely, the electron collision data is cross sections. And other things are rates, of course, we can turn all cross sections into rates if that's what people want. Uh, and we sort of subdivide reactions by classes, which the three big picture classes at the moment are electrons, heavy particle collisions, and other chemical reactions or proton initiated reactions. And we're going to talk about surface stuff later on, so I'll we'll talk about that. And one of the key things, which is sort of, I think, philosophy Christian probably brought to the whole undertaking is that everything has been graphic records, so we can actually trace trace where it comes from. Now, I have to say that we still have a certain amount of data which I trace to mark thing. this at some point in this line. <laughs> uh, but where, where there is an underlying computational measurement, you should be able to should be able to uh, trace that back and find it in the database. And then we have a variety, and that's something we started from the beginning, pre-assembled. And I put and validated in brackets because in principle they're meant to be val and validated. In practice, validating the chemistries is quite difficult and quite time consuming. So I wouldn't say that all the chemistries we provide are super well validated, but it's certainly a direction of travel. Of course, once you've got them validated, you've validated them. Uh, and it's certainly something we would like to do. To do more of, and we'll, I think Martin will talk about also reducing chemistry. It's again a very complicated net network, so tractable networks for modeling. So, just to remind you, this is a simple idea of what we mean by plasma chemistry. It's basically all the processes that take place in your plasma that link the species together. And of course, this is argon only, and argon chemistry is important, but not wildly complicated. You're talking about a dozen reactions. So and we call all of these things reactions, even if it's an electron turning argon to argon star, just label that as a reaction in our, in our, in our language. The reality is that things look, tend to look much more like that, uh, that you have a whole massive network with maybe 100 species and many hundreds of reactions. Uh, and quite often these things are desirable but impractical when it comes to actually using them in a, in a, in a real application. So that's one of the one of the issues we've been, we've been dealing with. Uh, so three years ago, almost exactly, we published this paper, and quite a few of you will recognize your names, and listed, listed co-authors, and that was the original 
sort of at least scientific knowledge database, we'd actually be distributing the data about three or four months for this. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the paper in detail, you can go and read it, it's open access. But that this is just a way of measuring progress three years after launch. So at that point, we had 900 species, we've just about doubled that. We had just over 4,000 reactions, we have a fourfold increase in that. Uh, we, we tended to employ rather keen summary interns from UCL who are very good at hoovering up reactions. So they do sometimes need a little bit of wary eye kept on to make sure that the data is accurate when it gets to the data. So, uh, number of chemistries that launched is 29. That's not gone up substantially. It's about 38 now. So the number of properly validated chemistries has gone up to one to several. Uh, and then what we have is a whole lot of additional features that have been added the data set. So I don't think anyone going to demonstrate the API at all. Yeah? No, we should do. So we have a, 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 an automatic interface uh, circuit that runs into the uh, modeling program QVT, where you can simply suck in the data into the, maybe that's something we can do offline privately if people are interested, but we'll suck in the data automatically from the data set. So you actually run it from the modeling program to extract your data rather than have to pre-extract the data. We can uh, before lunch. We can. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be nice to, to have a quick, a quick demo. It's quite uh, we are getting into surface chemistry data. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We have a global model attached to the database written by Martin. We have a Boltzmann solver. Uh, we're worrying about chemistry optimization. By that, I mean reducing 5,000 reactions to 30 or 40 critical reactions and essentially give you the same answer. And then we're working on expanding and improving the data model. I, I run an MSc in scientific computing, scientific and data intensive computing here, which has gone off scale in the number of students. So I have lots of enthusiastic students looking at projects, so we're getting someone working on actually improving these things. The QDB paper has been quite interesting because it's been very heavily read and downloaded, and in my view, not terribly highly cited. Uh, what, what that, so that I'm just taking the data from ResearchGate, <coughs> not normally where I get my data from, but according to PSST, we were one of the most downloaded papers of the year that were published, second or third on the list. Uh, and it's clearly generated a lot of, a lot of interest. But so they, these are just examples of the ones, ones who cited it. I'm not going to go through them in any detail. So that, that was sort of just a quick overview of where we are. And then I think Sebastian and Martin will get a bit into some details. Right, so I, I'm going to start uh, just a couple of slides about uh, some of the new uh, some of the new uh, products or about some resources where we've been adding to the, to the database uh, lately. Uh, so first one of those, uh, Professor Tennyson already uh, touched upon this, was the global model. So that was developed by me. Uh, so uh, uh, it's a very simple global model uh, written entirely in Python. Uh, it uses, uh, uses a SciPy package, which is open source. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, it's fairly simple. Uh, it's also for a reactor average uh, particle density. So an electron temperature only, so now we'll get temperature. Uh, it's adequate, adequately fast uh, uh, for constant powers at least. It's in a matter of seconds. Uh, Modes like yeah, some single seconds for, for the for the very very biggest uh, mechanisms. Uh, it's running directly on the QDB server uh, upon user for a request and. Uh, yeah, basic equations which are solved are particle density balance uh, for every species. Uh, then there's charge neutrality for for electron density, and then uh, uh, electron energy density balance for electron temperature. So again, as I said, no gas temperature. That's assumed uh, as parameter. And uh, the reaction mechanism input to the model uh, is read directly from QDB database, uh, and uh, the the kinetics is in the Arrhenius form only. So it doesn't work with cross sections. It doesn't, uh, it's not coupled to any Boltzmann solver or anything like that. Uh, so wherever we have cross sectional data for uh, electronic collisions, uh, uh, I just simply fit it to Arrhenius form on, on a grid of uh, electron temperatures. And 
and their uh, Maxwellian distributions. Uh, so the mechanism is read either from a pre compiled uh, chemistries or pre compiled uh, chemistry data sets we, we, we hold uh, in QDB, or it can be uh, linked to a dynamic chemistry generator, which is another feature I'm going to be talking about uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I keep stressing it's very simple. I think it, it, it's, it needs to, uh, it, it's a point which needs to, uh, uh, <coughs> we need to get across uh, to anybody who wants to use it because uh, as very, very much everybody I think knows here, uh, like this sort of model, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's probably very limited set of applications where this kind of model can uh, give you uh, and a reliable quantitative data, but uh, that doesn't mean it's useless. I think it, it's, it can prove to be very useful for like studying trends and insights into into complicated uh, data sets, uh, which is I think uh, what global models are are best for anyway. Uh, uh, last point uh, for this slide is uh, there is a extensive documentation uh, which uh, uh, users are sort of directed to uh, on any page where they uh, interact with the global model on QDB website. And that basically the, uh, that, that, that uh, contains all the reactions, uh, all, all the equations and pretty much everything the, the model solves uh, very explicitly. So it's, it's aimed for full transparency. Basically when I was writing it, I, my aim was that anybody who reads it should be able to code it themselves and get to exactly the same results as the global model on the on the database is uh, just two slides about uh, how the user interface looks like so as I said uh, the, the inputs uh, uh, the, the user inputs would be power pressure gas temperature and geometric factors which uh, which uh, sort of influence uh, the diffusion model and then feed, feed gas flows and some surface coefficients. And at the present time, everything is sort of constant. So we, we don't allow, uh, uh, although the, 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 the model supports it uh, from the QDB user interface, we, 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 we basically ask users to, to only provide like one constant number, like constant in time. So there's no uh, power pulsing, there's no uh, pressure pulsing or anything like that. Uh, and in terms of surface coefficients, uh, these can be uh, uh, entered arbitrarily, and it, it works on this basis of sticking coefficients and frequent species and region coefficients. And yeah, and any any species can uh, which has non-zero sticking coefficient can have uh, as many as you want frequent species used to get served. Uh, the the results uh, again, it, it, it is solved in uh, as a direct integration in time, but we're only showing uh, the we're only showing the the final time frame results, and I believe we're flagging if these are not uh, uh, converged. So uh, that's that's very much yeah. That, that that's that's what user might want to know, like if if if, if anything. Uh, keeps changing and didn't converge to a steady state. Uh, there might be an indication of uh, too short uh, simulation time or unbalanced, uh, unbalanced mechanism or stuff like that. But yeah, we're, we're, we're only showing the, the, the final values. So that was the global model. Uh, yeah, another feature which, uh, which was added uh, too lately, but it's been there for a while. But it's a dynamic chemistry builder. So uh, uh, we, we've mentioned that we have some pre-compiled pre chemistries. Apart from that, a uh, uh, user can sort of build the chemistry on their own. And basically how it works is user, uh, uh, user inputs the feed gases. Uh, and from these feed gas species, we basically like uh, explore the whole collisional cascade, which is going on. Uh, Again, only from the data which are actually in QDB. So, so we are starting with the, with the feed gas species. Uh, uh, we find all the reactions from these possible uh, uh, react using these possible reactants, and we take the products and then to the pool of possible reactants, and we iterate like this until it converges with the like the full, full collision cascade. And you can imagine that this uh, can result in, in pretty uh, bulky uh, mechanisms. 
and for example, you, you can get to to a mechanism where you have a full, uh, you know, full vibrational kinetics, which you don't really want, or something like that. So, so basically, for for this reason, we we currently uh, ask user to intervene and prune this by just selecting species and reactions uh, they're interested in. Uh, and yeah, when, once the once the mechanism is built, uh, user then gets chance to download it, or you can, uh, or uh, they can go to global model and. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, the functionality that I added to the QDB or I'm currently developing versus that we have. Uh, uh, Boltzmann solver um, on the QDB. Uh, this is basically based on this paper by Rockwood, which, as far as I can tell, is kind of the um, paper which well, basically every Boltzmann solver is based on. Um, the difference between the original formulas by Rockwood and ours is that Rockwood used a uniform energy grid, whereas we use a non uniform energy grid. Apart from that, it's basically exactly the same formalism as in this paper. So. Um, we don't have a kind of, in contrast to the global model, we don't have a um, special documentation for this because it would basically just be a rewrite of this paper. Um, just with this, with the global model, uh, the calculations for this can be set up for both the pre-assembled and the self-generated chemistry sets by the dynamic chemistry generator. And its input, what you need here is simply the relative densities of your species you want to include in the Boltzmann solver and the neutral gas temperature. And when it comes to the section of the species as a default, um, the peak gases are always included. And apart from this, you can then manually select some additional species you want to include. Uh, for example, here we have an example of O2, where we would assume that it's dissociated to a significant degree, and maybe also have a significant degree of vibration excited states. Uh, based, but the main reason why you simply don't give a list of all species is because when you have a set of hundred of species, this list here would simply take up several screens. Uh, so instead, we opted for this manual selection of additional species. Um, yeah, so you enter this, the gas temperature, and basically then the solver pulls all the electron collision reactions with your selected species uh, from your scheme and uh, solves the Boltzmann um, equation for several values of the reduced electric fields um, online. And what you get out of this at the moment is here you get these graphs of the electron energy distribution functions for the different um, E over N values. You get the electron temperature as a function of the reduced electric field. And for each reaction uh, that you included in the Boltzmann solver, you can also get the rate coefficient um, as a function of the effective electron te temperature. And if you are a gold member, you can also download the results which in this case means it's a text file where you have one column for the E over N, one for the electron temperature, and one for each rate coefficient, which you used in the calculation. And then you can use this information for your um, own simulations, for example, or um, what you want to do with this. Um, so as I said, basically, at currently, Boltzmann solver takes um, all electron heavy particle collisions into account. Mm -hmm. One exception at the moment is still um, super elastic collisions, which is kind of a for legacy reasons in the data model, it's going to be simply not that easy to uh, find the energy gain that it conserves, which is super elastic collisions, but um, we're working on rectifying that. And what it currently doesn't um, include are uh, electron electron collisions. But again, we plan to include this at a later stage. Um, so, yeah, then another thing we recently added while we started adding some surface chemistry data. Uh, basically, we have here two rough categories. One is data which you could use in plasma simulations, for example, the sticking coefficients uh, for um, 0D or also 2D models, and data for service models, be they site based or feature profile models. Um, currently, we have just not that much data. Uh, one reason is for this that I, before I add more data, I want to make sure that the current data model actually works with everything we want to do before we have already hundreds of thousands of data points and they might need to be changed afterwards. So currently the selection, we have, for example, sticking coefficients for atomic oxygen, atomic fluoride, and fluorocarbons, and silent radicals. And these are presented here in this uh, tabular format, where in each row we have the gas species, the surface, uh, and the coefficient. 
and some comment how it was um, gotten and so on and the link to the reference. And of course, one problem with the service data is that um, they have a much higher uncertainty than gas phase reactions. For example, because the sticking coefficients depends heavily on the surface composition. For example, if you have a clean surface or it's already contaminated. And for this reason, you kind of have also a small disclaimer, which kind of states that these are not definitive values, but they will gather a rather good range of sticking coefficients. So at least for example, not least the order of magnitude you need. I mean, for example, this is a circuit in red. These are actually two values from the same paper. Uh, this is for oxygen on stainless steel. And one coefficient is um, what they say is for a clean surface. And one is then kind of the bottom limit for a saturated um, surface. And so again, these should not be interpreted as definitive values, but rather as a kind of uh, range, for example, up and lower limit for a clean surface and contaminated surface. Chemistry data using surface models. And these are in the form of kind of sets of individual reactions, which you can use to um, simulate a specific um, mechanism. I mean, here maybe the standard example would be a chemical silica, uh, chemical siliconage with atomic fluorine, which simply consists of these um, four reactions or the stepwise coordination of the silicon surface um, until you reach SI4, which absorbs from the surface. And for each, we give them the coefficient from one publication or from one set which was used um, in a simulation. And uh, this is for chemical reactions, of course, when you have to ions. Lots of these um, probabilities are actually energy dependent. And here I took an um, excerpt from a larger chemistry set. We can see in this case, we give the formula, which was used for the energy dependent, and then um, the parameters used in this case. And uh, so uh, these mechanisms are kind of um, well, intended to be used either in side-based surface models or for feature profile models. And basically, most of the data for these mechanisms come from articles which use other surface-based, type-based models or um, feature profile models in which, in this case, successfully replicates its experimental designs. And of course, there's still what the, um, even for these mechanisms, there's still the problem of the uncertainty in the coefficients and that they depend on um, condition of the surface. For example, what is actually often done with this chemical silicon edge with fluorine. This is a pure chemical edge. Of course, you can also have the ion-assisted um, edge where you would have, first of all, direct etching by or sputtering of the surface by the ions, but the ions can also just um, kind of weaken the bonds. And often this is actually not explicitly modeled, but just the coefficients for the chemical reactions are adjusted, so they are only implicitly there. So what you actually need to often do for these mechanisms is that you need to calibrate these coefficients to replicate your experimental results for a given uh, parameter set or something like this. Yeah, so we really want to attract contributors and we want to give people, because currently the database is populated from open sources, but we'd like also people, the heroes generating the data to be linked and presented there. We have uh, two people, one from Quantum Hall, Maria, <laughs> one from, not from Quantum Hall, Danoy, um, who contributed their data and want to link that data so that they themselves not only get exposure, uh, but also they maybe will see in their accounts and stats which data is more popular hopefully they get more citations because their data is easier to find and um, we are happy to support any applications for funding with letters and um, so this is also my call for inviting the people who can contribute and not only we want contributions in terms of the data but we also like contribution in terms of validation of the chemistry so that's something for discussion in the afternoon. So how are we funding it? So I just want to briefly outline the mem types of memberships we have. So the standard membership, it has quite a lot of functionalities available for free. So people can um, download some data sets. Uh, they can um, run Boltzmann solver, global models. So this is functionality which may be useful for students. And, in general, we have researchers doing publications, they haven't paid anything, they find it useful and find data, enough data to make publications. And uh, 
the gold membership. So the prizes are first prize is commercial and the second one is academic in this per year and three years. So the gold members get additional benefits of having access to the pre-assembled chemistry sets. So it's something we have put together. They have unlimited downloads. They can also assemble their own chemistry using dynamic chemistry app and download it like up to 20 per month. The data is in very flexible format. And if you have QVT, you can use an API and then they're just within your interface, you'll be able to get the data. And, and but most valuable, it seems, for customers is being able to reach out and ask us questions. And uh, also, we are very open working on this reduction mechanism to receive requests from gold members around the reduction mechanism for them. And then also for last year, we have an idea of introducing a new type of paid membership, which is platinum, which on the top of all benefits of the gold membership includes calculation of cross-section by our team using PC and uh, for up to six pieces uh, a year. And we realized that some companies, they may not tell you, be able to tell you in advance what species they need, but once they buy a package, what happened in the screen? <laughs> um, they are quite happy to kind of to tell us within a year which cross sections they need. And we hope that this helps people because sometimes there is no data and uh, this is an opportunity for them to get it. In case of academic users, because it's very discounted price, we also request that we push this data online. So if an academic customer buying a Platinum membership, it's much cheaper for them, but we'd like to populate the database in this way as well. And <coughs> little plug for our new software. So this is the software we're using for Platinum membership. And this is a new spin on our well-known Platinum Land. <coughs> Software it is based on UKR more plus it's new updated R matrix codes and we have listened to the feedback from our customers of what aspects of the setup was complicated and we try to make it as easy as possible. A lot of the input is automatically generated, so you can just click 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 through <laughs> and run your molecules. Uh, we targeting it kind of the there will be more functionality added to our matrix and to QEC. So we're targeting it towards the larger molecules mm -hmm. and heavier molecules. And uh, if you would like to try, there is a free trial available from, Quantum Main, from the main website. You just, there is a link so you can request a trial. And uh, it's limited to examples only. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions about it, talk to us or any of us or Professor Vincent, myself, or Maria. I will be happy to discuss. 